This video is brought to you by my wonderful Patreon team. If you want to join the Patreon team, there's a link down below. And if you don't want to, that's totally fine. But if you don't, I'll break your legs, okay? <laughs> The Mafia, the mob, gangsters, families, good fellas, and of course, wise guys. As a culture, we are obsessed with crime families and their stories, and we enjoy watching these characters become victims of the lifestyle of the mob and everything that it brings with it. The fame, the respect, the guns, the money, the booze, and of course, the entertainment of those around them. The gangster and mafia genre within the movie industry to this day still continues to draw in the audiences and of course the interest of people. It allows us to become the worst part of ourselves for just a few moments and allows us to escape into a world of crime, guns, drugs and of course broads just for a few seconds. But when I was 10 I asked for the Godfather DVD collection and I used to spend countless nights just watching the trilogy over and over again getting lost within the rich believable world and very quickly becoming hooked to its character and its genre overall. And the gaming industry has made some incredible attempts to replicate the conventions that we see within the mob movies by being able to beat and take over rackets within the Godfather games or unload your weapons into your enemies while endorsed within drugs and cocaine in Scarface and of course you can't forget exploring the wacky martial arts field world of Yakuza. The wonders of the gaming industry has allowed us to fully escape into the Mafia lifestyle without having to leave the comfort of our sofas. We're able to steal all the cars, fire all the Tommy guns and kill whoever we want without a single bad side effect or a fault in the world. We're able to fully escape into the glamorized lifestyle of Mafia members and gangsters, but what happens when a game turns around and faces the audience just like Mafia did and asks a crucial question? What are you willing to sacrifice to truly become a wise guy? The Mafia Trilogy has remained a well-respected franchise that has its own special place within the gaming industry. Each and every entry has told a very different story that has characters falling victim to the seductive and even addictive lifestyle of a mobster. Whether you're talking about Clay's journey of revenge and power or Vito Scaletta's destructive personality and need for respect and obsession with being someone within a family, but what I want to talk about today is of course the themes of the Mafia Definitive Edition and the first game overall and how it begs the question of after it's all said and done, what do you want to be remembered for? Goodfellas has been seen as one of the greatest movies of all time. Henry glamorizes the lifestyle of a gangster and despite his overall outcome and escape from the life of crime, he never really regrets it. He would say he would do it all over again in a heartbeat. We as an audience are too persuaded by the lifestyle and glided through his journey of becoming a wise guy. The opening line is possibly one of the most famous lines in cinema. As far back as I can remember, I always wanted to be a gangster. The impact that Goodfellas crafted for the mobster film can still be seen to this day. It had a relatable and even cool style, which often shows and glamorizes characters and events that we're meant to praise or even feel attached to, despite them being horrible crimes and even horrible people. And that's why Mafia is so important, not just to gaming, but I also mean the Mafia genre overall. It tells a very different side of an ex-mobster who wanted to escape the life. Where Henry was ready to be a gangster, Tommy first starts off by saying, I didn't want to get in with criminals. Better to be poor and alive than rich and dead. So right there, back then, I was out. But there is a famous saying that says, when opportunity knocks, it only knocks once. 
and unfortunately Tommy was a victim to opportunity. Working on a lonely night shift he meets Paulie and Sam, two men who will become his best friends but are also gangsters. They come crashing into his life and he is forced to drive them to safety. For his actions he is then given a reward and a free favour for his help, but despite having this favour he seems to refuse it. And when opportunity knocks for Tommy, for some reason it knocks a second time. He is then attacked the next day and finds himself in need of that very favour, and he knew exactly where he had to go. And from this point on, despite everything Tommy said about not wanting to be a criminal, he finds himself in a place in which he feels like he truly belongs. The contrast to him smoking alone on night shifts and being constantly belittled by customers, and then being surrounded by friends and people who respect him, it's no wonder why he felt so seduced by the lifestyle of being a gangster, very much like Henry Hill was seduced by the royalties and iconic scenes that we see within Goodfellas. Tommy's story though is one which chooses to never ever glamorise the side of what it means to be a wise guy. Unlike Vito Skeletor from Mafia 2 whose story focuses on the successes, the money, the power, the nice suits and fast cars through energetic happy-go-lucky montages which is told through his power hungry eyes. And this is to very much fall in line to what people expect to see from a mob story but for the personal part of what it means to be Tommy, Tommy wants to focus on the characters, the people he shakes hands with and of course the personal moments which fuel his inevitable betrayal. From his point of view, walking Sarah home, learning about her favourite flowers, showing that she gives food to people who truly need it and of course the fact that she had to stitch up her own father's wounds from her abusive mother, for Tommy Sarah was perfect for him. And for a motivation for us the player and for Tommy to get out of the life, this moment in the story was told not to show that he could have any woman that he wanted in the world, but the fact that Sarah was the woman for him and Sarah is that safe life that he always wanted. And and that's the safe life that Tommy needs and he always knew it. So when danger comes along and threatens her life and of course his, he knows what he must do to become the person he truly wants to be. Protecting Sarah and doing what is right for the family is all that really matters to Tommy and to solve the issue of harm coming to Sarah it was only truly a trigger away. Tommy had already stepped into the life of a criminal, he had beaten and killed many people but not once did he truly have to think about his actions. But that wasn't until he had to pull a trigger on a young dying foolish thug who just got into the lifestyle a little bit too early. No. No, no, wait. I truly love this scene and I think it's possibly one of the most powerful scenes I've seen in a game in a long while. It shows us Tommy's mental state hitting a threshold that not many mob movies or even related stories are willing to show us. Tommy is forced to pull the trigger on the dying teen but he can't. He hesitates as he begs for mercy and then Paulie steps in and pulls the trigger for him. Paulie then proceeds in lecturing Tommy on killing people and the whole time while this is going on Tommy is just watching in shock and his gaze and look just says it all, the regret, discomfort, but then Paulie reminds him that it had to be done. It's a part of the life and it's all part of the job and it's for the family and of course it's for Sarah and that's what snaps Tommy out of his shock. And that's what's most important for him. He is loyal to the family but knows he can't be a made man so he has no true goal to get any higher in ranks. For him it pays the bills and puts him in company of people who respect him and of course he respects back. He found himself being in harm's way and even saw his closest of friends come close to death but just because he had to do it because the Don says so it just became a part of the job. And doing these tasks over and over again can eventually take its toll on someone because at the end of the day we're all human. Tommy comes home one evening covered in blood, stares into the darkest part of his mind, holding back all his emotion and just turns to Sarah to say, work. Matthew's depiction of the mob lifestyle is remembered because it doesn't glamorise you into the lifestyle of what it means to be a gangster but instead humanises it. Sam and Paulie act as our reminder of the cliches of the Mafia mentality, with Sam being stern, loyal, top of his game and would definitely be first in role of the Don whenever he had the chance, and of course has devoted himself to the family entirely. 
Paulie, on the other hand, is loud, aggressive. He understands the dirty tricks of the trade and has been in the life of crime for as long as he can remember. He is our Henry Hill, he is our glamorized and at the same time our exaggerated and expressive version of that lifestyle. And everything he knows, he makes sure he teaches to Tommy. And then for the game to turn the story on its head and show you what's truly going on beneath Paulie's tough exterior it was just such a brilliant scene. I don't know what it's like for you going home to your wife and kid, but that's why I'm doing this. Who's gonna marry me? Nearly 40 years old and nothing to show for it but my rap sheet. But we do this, I get enough scratch to finally get out. Who knows? You're not built for the domestic life, Polly. Six months in, you'll put a bullet in your brain out of boredom. Christ. I'm ready to punch my ticket right now. Hearing Paulie pour his heart out to Tommy about getting out of the lifestyle and also thinking about suicide and how he's wasted all the precious years in his life hit me harder than I thought it would ever do. It made me think about myself and even others around me, being stuck in dead end jobs and situations we truly don't want to be a part of, but end up being stuck in that loop anyway. Being unable to take creative risks in my life because my job overall pays the bills. If I left that job and all of a sudden wanted to dedicate myself to creating videos or even get into drawing, I knew that wouldn't be worth it in the end or at least for the moment because I don't have that level of confidence. Or sitting down on my arse all day moaning about my weight and thinking about how fat I'm getting but at the same time comforting myself with sugary drinks, chocolate and a plate load of macaroni and cheese. I know I'm not helping myself and the more I wait and more years I waste, eventually I might end up just like Paulie and I don't really want to be that at all. Sometimes life can truly work out great and more often than not, things unfortunately don't work out at all. It's all entirely up to you and how you face opportunity when it comes knocking. But also the most important thing to know is when opportunity comes knocking, should you always answer its call. And that's what I love about the story of Mafia. It doesn't entice us to the lifestyle of the mob, but instead kills the expectations and successes that we have mentally created for the wise guy. I know it's the month of all spooky things, but I had this in the backlog, so I just had to finish it. But I promise you, the next two videos for this month will be spooky and scary. And I'm not looking forward to playing and watching what I need to do for this one. So, wish me luck on that. And if you enjoyed this video, please leave a link down below and comment. And let me know what is your favourite Mafia. I know Mafia 3 has a lot of people who don't enjoy it. But personally, I enjoy the trilogy as a whole, and I feel like they go together quite nicely. But obviously, if you disagree, it's entirely up to you. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe. And of course, I will see you next week on the next checkpoints.